Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of The Independent Brokerage. I'm Howard Flashen, the broker and owner of Roundtable Realty. And I'm Erin Salem, Director of Marketing Director for Roundtable Realty. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Welcome back to The Swing. Yes. Long did, weekend. Did you watch the show Shrouded in Darkness last night? I sure did not. What's oh. that? So Game of Thrones is on oh. HBO show. Everybody, if you haven't seen it, it's on HBO. I'm one of those people that's never seen a oh, single good. episode. Well, I can tell you that they use no lighting at all. That's what, Actually, I saw another comment about that today that... They should use two tea lights instead of one. There was, a, we watch it at a friend's house. Hi, Chris. And uh, he says in the middle of it, yeah, this, this TV setup I have isn't good for this dark of a show. <laughs> like, it's just black splotches. Really? Over. Yeah, it was so dark. I wonder why they did that. They, he sent me something that said they wanted to feel or look as real as possible. And I guess. Congratulations. Nobody a, can see. If you're in a war with swords. That are, are flaming, mm-hmm. flaming swords. Uh, Which is a dessert I At have night. <laughs> yeah. There you go. It would be dark. Dark. So. Okay. Uh, did you go anywhere this weekend? Have, any fun thing, have anything fun? Everyone I know's child's birthday was this weekend. And? Three birthday parties. At your house? Oh, no. Oh, okay. No. No. All over the darn place. They were great. They were fun. The kids all had a great time. The parents were all exhausted. Nobody got a break or a nap. And now it's Monday. <laughs> Welcome so, back. Yeah. This is where you, this is where you get a break? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I know that. How is. about you? How was your uh, weekend? It was good. We it's our anniversary. Happy anniversary, yeah, 12 Howard years. Nashley. 12 years. She stuck it out with me. Now she's in trouble because there's all she's kinds in too deep. of... Yeah, there's extra legal arrangements that have to be made. And so you might as well just stick it out. Yeah, yeah. No, really, congratulations. That's Thank wonderful. Thank you. We went to the Calford Chop House. Oh, we, big deal. We've talked about them before. Did you like it? I did, but there's a little something they do that's weird. Uh-oh, here it is. So we, they have a downstairs area. Yeah, yeah. Right? And it's, it's got tables you eat at along the outside wall. They were too close. It's just weird. You're that too you're close. You're sitting there and you're like... You know, like this with someone you no, don't you even really know. No, you really are this close you're to this someone, close, and then you're, and you're facing your and partner. And you know, you're like trying to talk about your 12 years of of loving <laughs> bliss, and yeah. this person next to you is, you know, eating loudly or whatever. <laughs> what you got there? <laughs> right. That's true. You do sit very near um, friends at Calford, but how was the food? It was good. We the first round of ribeyes that came out were very well done. But I'll tell you, they came over, they apologized, they took them right back. Oh, really? They brought out new ribeyes that were perfectly co- uh, cooked. How did you order them to begin with? Medium rare. And they came out well done? Uh, medium well, if not well. Oopsie daisy. But the sides, they, they left the sides and then brought fresh sides and fresh ribeyes, and they were great. They oh, were really, nice. really good. Yeah. Mistakes happen. It's how yeah, you handle it. That's right. They handled it perfectly. Somebody got a text and, message while they were cooking the ribeyes. And the people next to us, they agreed with our <laughs> our sending back of the Oh, yeah. Food. That's better. That looks better. Yeah. Then you, <laughs> do you want this one? Do, do you, you want, want to, We uh, have extra potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So there's an opinion article in Inman from uh, Bernice Ross. Bernice. Bernice. Shout out to Bernice. Uh, <laughs> so Bernice uh, wrote a little article because there's a there's a lawsuit. There's always lawsuits, right? Always in real estate. In real there's estate. All, yeah. And this one's called, how do you say that? Merrill? Mm, Moral? Sure, we'll just go with that. It's a lawsuit about commissions, of course, because you know, always. always on attack. Yep. Um, and so just so you know, I don't know if you know, knew this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you probably don't. I doubt it. Uh, is uh, there's an argument that some people say that Buyers pay commissions, okay? Mm. That they're built into the sales price. So sales prices are 6% or 7% or 8%, whatever commissions are in that particular area, mm-hmm. are the prices reflect that amount. Okay. Okay. And the there's another half that's saying, no, 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 sellers pay commissions. Okay. And it's probably somewhere in between, but who wants to come to that kind of conclusion? Sure. God Sounds forbid. Hard. Yeah. yeah to, but anyway, so... Bernice says, nope, sellers pay commissions. Now, it's easier to explain it as sellers pay commissions because it's typically taken out of the equity when they close on the home. They're not, like, writing a check or anything like that. Okay. But here's the thing. Uh, Bernice falls on one interesting uh, uh, salvo, let's call it, for why sellers pay commissions. Okay. Which is that the tax law says so. 
Oh, does it? Yeah, it says the tax law, said it's been codified that sellers pay commissions because the closing statement clearly states how the commission is paid by the seller, and that amount is deductible on the seller's tax returns, not only on a federal level, but in on a state level in many states as well. That makes sense, doesn't it? It does. There's an exception. Okay, which is? If a buyer signs an exclusive buyer's broker contract okay. with a... So, Buyer broker agreement. Okay. And it says that the agent must make a certain amount, and if there's a shortfall, the buyer's going to pay that amount. But there's a problem even with that. Why? The VA won't allow it. So if the VA won't allow it, so as the government rules. entity uh, with a lot of loans, mm -hmm. and they won't even let they won't let their members pay those those silly transaction fees. No. Some brokerages have. Yeah, right. Uh, we don't, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but the VA won't even let them pay those, so they won't let them pay commissions so it, it becomes a real um stickler uh, a real sticky subject a pickle a pickle yeah you know but the government sticky and the tax pickle. law says the sellers pay for it and then there's some other things in here that bernice goes over like you know how would a buyer do that so a buyer yeah where would, they <laughs> and they and they go to, to a lender to get their loan right and they get pre-qualified and they're going to buy a two hundred thousand dollar home and they're going to put forty thousand dollars down yeah and the lender goes okay well that's great you've got forty thousand put down right and they go oh but I also got to pay this this uh, you know four thousand or five thousand or six thousand in a commission to my buyer broker, and they go, whoa, whoa, so hold on, so now let me go back into your assets and make right. sure you have that amount. Yeah, you've got the forty thousand. So they'd have to rewrite the whole loan more. process. It it would it would to qualify people. Oh, it would be a big problem. Yeah, it would be a big 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 problem, and uh, and many times the sellers already have the equity in their home. Not to say that they should be giving up equity for the commission, but that's what I would think of is the sellers actually have the upper hand a majority of the well, time. Well, and it's certainly a lot less sticky. And there's other things that Bernie brings up that are really interesting, like, you know, how would that show up on the closing disclosure for a buyer that they're paying this amount? So does yeah. that get to draw does that get drawn out or affect their down payment potentially? Does, what if that affects PMI? The loans in the VA when they say that sort of well, stuff? Well, yeah, and you would think that people wouldn't want to help with that. Real estate agents wouldn't want to help with that transaction because the person who has the VA loan isn't going to be able to pay a commission for a realtor because it explicitly states that in the loan. And so well, who actually, wants to help somebody with a VA loan get by a house? Well, I can give you an example of where that actually happened. Similar. Uh, someone made an offer on one of my listings, mm -hmm. and uh, they were using a lender who will remain nameless. I don't necessarily love that lender. Oh. And they made their offer with needing of about, I mean, this was like a $230,000 home. And yeah. the borrower's agent said that they needed like $8,000 towards buyer's closing costs from the seller. Okay. And I said, you know, you know, why? That's an exorbitant amount. Mm -hmm. Where is it? And this particular lender just charges, you know, they say they're helping the VA, but I would argue that they're taking advantage of their members. But that being said, the the buyer didn't have a chance because and, and the agent when I said no, the seller's not gonna do that. And I talked to the seller and the seller said no, they're not gonna do that. Right. And uh, the buyer's agent had to take them to a different house. Couldn't buy that home. Even it wasn't if they a choice. If yeah. they loved that home, thought it was the best home ever, they weren't so that's a real to, life example yeah. of yeah, how that would play out. Yep. So, you know, I think, at least in North Florida, sellers pay commissions. Mm -hmm. Whether or not it's built into the pricing and has been for the last hundred years, I have no idea. Yeah. But um but I, I think that the buyers don't pay commissions and, and you know, circling back to my soapbox, our soapbox. <laughs> don't do it yourself. Okay, sorry. Well we have a clip for it. <laughs> Soapbox. The transaction fees, you know, they just, I've seen transaction fees as high as $750. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, you're paying. Listen, Pete, they will make their money wherever and however they can. And the truth of the matter is that if you know how to run a brokerage the way you and Keith do, you can run a brokerage without nickel well, and diming every client that passes through. You know, we actually go out of our way to try to protect our clients from these crazy fees that come mm -hmm. up. We love using Landmark Title, Hekin Law, mm -hmm. um, you know, North American Title is very good as well. Yes. But, you know, Hekin Law 
you know, they, 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 everybody charges a fee now to the buyers for because of trid and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, they it's charge new. A, mm-hmm. uh, for the last Newer, like two years, three right? Or well, when it started rolling out, we put it in the contract to protect our clients that they're only going to pay two hundred fifty dollars. Why? Because we see some title companies, some local, that charge seven hundred, eight hundred, nine hundred dollars. Well, right. We move them. That's right. Or we put, you know, many times a listing agent will call us mm-hmm. when the, our offer comes in and it says, you know pursuant to this contract, blah, 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 we're not going to pay, our client's not going to pay more than $250 for yeah. a, a title service We just service had an fee. agent. Right. And and the agent on the other side will call up and be like, uh, you know, what is this? What are you talking about? And it's like, call your title company, find out how much it, they're charging the buyer. And they're like, they don't charge the buyer. Oh, my gosh. They do charge the buyer. Call them. They call them, and they're charging them $500. That's what we're not paying $500. For. Right. So, Anyway. Another one of those things we're looking out for. Always working for the people. For people. People before property. Yeah. Every time. Yeah. Well, that was very interesting. And I, I agree with Miss Bernice, it <laughs> sounds like. Yes. Um, and I'd be interested to hear if anybody has opposing opinions to Miss Bernice. Leave them in the comments because I, I would be interested but to you hear know what? what it would be. Yeah. They, they need to leave a comment, but then they need to share. Follow. Like it. Subscribe. Follow, subscribe. We, we have like 25 episodes on our YouTube channel. And I, 30. Think, I think we have seven or eight fans. Yeah. So. Yeah. Hey, to our, we should probably memorize their names. Yeah, Sarah, Chris. Yeah, so we can uh, actually Jason, say Brenna. hello to them. Right. There's four. <laughs> so here we go, right? So thank you to thank our you. seven fans. And we'll see you next week. Bye.